Hello, George Nachik here. Today is July 22nd, 2018. In this video, I'll be solving a number of very basic, simple electrical network problems. These problems were submitted to me by some students in India. Apparently, uh, they come off or are used to practice for a, what they call the JEE exam, apparently an important exam there for college entrance. So I've taken my time and solve many of these problems in general terms so that you can apply it to other networks, other element values than just the ones that were specified. I will go through the exam questions. You can jump over uh, that portion of the video. If you look in the pinned comment, I have a time index into all the problem solutions so that you can pick and choose as you wish so you don't have to watch the whole video if you care not to. The only way to really gain proficiency in solving electrical network problems is you just have to practice a lot. You have to challenge yourself and solve as many network problems as possible. Goodness knows how many network problems I've solved over the years. Uh, thousands uh, ranging from the very simple to extremely complex active network problems um, dealing with um, operational amplifiers, LCs, dependent independent sources, yeah, transistor circuits. But to get to that point you really have to just practice and practice and practice. So we'll move on here. You just have to kind of excuse me. I look a little bit rough right now. I've been up for uh, let's see about 32 hours. I've have a very full plate and I just wanted to kind of get this video kicked out before I go and crash. So anyway, enjoy and comment and send, submit problems to me if uh, there's something that's stumping you. I'll be happy to uh, take a look at it for you. Now these are the problems that we'll be working on. Question one, a storage battery is connected to a charger for charging with a voltage of 12 and a half volts. The internal resistance of the storage battery is one ohm. When charging current is a half an amp, the EMF of the storage battery is. The choices are 13 volts, 12 and a half, 12 volts, or 11 and a half volts. The second question, under what condition current passing through resistance R, this resistance here, can be increased by short circuiting the battery EMF2. So we're going to short out this battery here. The internal resistances of the two batteries are R1 and R2 respectively. So which of these conditions will allow the current to increase through this resistance when we short out this battery? And our choices are A, E2, R1 is greater than E1 times the sum of capital R in the internal resistance of battery 2. E1 R2 is greater than E2 cap R plus R1, the internal resistance of battery 1. E2 R2 is greater than E1 cap R plus R2. And E1 R1 is greater than E2 R1 cap R plus R1. Third question. A battery consists of a variable number N of identical cells having internal resistance connected in series. The terminals of the battery are short circuited and the current I measured. Which one of the graphs below shows the relationship between the current I and the number of cells N? So we have a linear relationship um, a more like a logarithmic relationship here, quadratic relationship, a constant, and a, uh, a second order polynomial type relationship. Question four. In this previous problem, if the cell had been connected in parallel instead of in series, which of the above graphs, or actually this graph, would have shown the relationship between the total current I and N. So instead of having the cells connected in series, we now have them connected in parallel. So as we change the number of cells in parallel, 
which one of these graphs gives the relationship between the total short circuit current of n cells connected in parallel and the number of cells. Question 5. N identical cells are joined in series with two of the cells, A and B, in the loop with reverse polarities. The EMF of each cell is E and internal resistance is R of each cell. The potential difference across cell A or B, here where the number of cells is greater than 4, which one of these relationships gives us the potential difference across one of the reverse cells as a function of the number of cells in the loop. We have A, which is twice the battery voltage divided by N. B is twice the battery voltage times the quantity of 1 minus 1 over N. C is four times the battery voltage over N. And D is twice the battery voltage times the quantity of 1 minus 2 over N. The sixth problem in the figure shown, this one here, battery 1, the top one, has an EMF of 6 volts and an internal resistance of 1 ohm. Battery 2 has an EMF of 2 volts and an internal resistance of 3 ohms. The wires interconnecting have negligible resistance. What is the potential difference across the terminals of battery 2? So, what we want to do now is find what is the potential difference across uh, battery 2 here under these conditions. And the choices are A is 4 volts, B is 1.5 volts, C is 5 volts, D is a half a volt. In question 7, the terminal vat voltage across a battery of EMF E can be either A, 0, B, greater than the uh, open circuit voltage of a battery, less than the open circuit voltage of the battery, or all of the above. So I'll be answering these seven questions, plus there's one other question I'll get to. Okay, our first problem is, is we have a storage battery represented by this model of a Thevenin voltage in series with a Thevenin resistance. We can represent any network any linear network by its Thevenin equivalent. And circuit theory tells us that any linear network can be represented by some resistance or impedance RB in series with a Thevenin source. Uh, here we'll call VB. This is the cell voltage open circuit cell voltage of our storage battery. So what we want to do is we want to find when the voltage, what we're given, is between A and B. VAB is given as 12.5 volts. When the voltage across the terminals of the battery is 12.5 volts and this charger is supplying a half an amp into the storage battery, what is the cell voltage VB? We can also represent our charger by a Thevenin equivalent circuit, but we don't need to know the internal details of this because we're given the terminal voltage as 12 and a half volts. So we can write a simple equation using Kirchhoff's voltage law around the loop is that VAB is equal to IRB plus the cell voltage VB. We know VAB, we know I, we know RB, we can solve for VB. So VB then is VAB minus IRB. Well VAB is given as 12 and a half volts. I is a half an amp and RB is 1 ohm. So this is 12 and a half minus 1 half or 12 volts. That's our VB. So that's our cell voltage. The answer is C. 12.0 volts out of the choices that were given.
second problem is, is we have two batteries connected in series with a resistance cap R connected across that series combination. And we want to know under what conditions, what is the relationship between the circuit elements such that when we short out battery number two, that is we place a short between B and C, that the current through R will increase. Okay, I'm going to model this by putting a shorting switch across this battery, battery number two. Okay, and the switch is open. We'll designate that as x equals zero, and when x equals one, the switch is closed. I'm going to solve this in general, and we'll call the current I through the resistance R as I sub x. When x is zero, that is, I zero is a current through R with the switch open, and I one is when the switch is closed, will be the current. And what we want to know is under what conditions will be I1 will be greater than I0. That is, what is the relationship on the circuit elements such that the current through R will increase when we close the switch? So I1 will have to be greater than I0. Okay, we have two conditions. One, with the switch open and the switch closed. Okay, let's write a con the current in I, the current I through R uh, when the switch is open. Well, the current I when the switch is open is just the sum of the voltages around the loop, which is E1 plus E2 divided by the total resistance in the loop, which is R1 plus R2 plus R. And this, with the switch open, we call this I0. So this is our I0. Now, when the switch is closed, we have I1, which again is the total voltage around the loop divided by the resistance in the loop. Well, we have a short between B and C, so this E2 and R2 are taken out of the equation. So this becomes E1, the total voltage in the loop, divided by R1 plus R, the total resistance in the loop. Now, for the current to increase when the switch is closed, where battery number two is short-circuited, means that I1 is greater than I0, or we want to find the conditions under when I1 over I0 is greater than 1. All right, well, all we have to do now is just ratio these two. So I1 over I0 will be E1 over R1 plus cap R divided by E1 plus E2 over R1 plus R plus R2. Okay, I just transpose the R2 and the R in the equation so that we can pair these. So we can write this now is I1 over I0 is I'm going to divide through by E1. So um, or let's first divide by R1 plus R in the numerator. So we have 1 plus R2 over R1 plus R. I'm dividing through by R1 plus R. And then that's going to be over. I'm going to bring E1 down. I'm going to divide numerator and denominator by E1. So I have 1 plus E2 over E1. And we want this to be greater then 1. Now I'm going to cross multiply by 1 plus E2 over E1. So we have 1 plus R2 over R1 plus R 
is greater than 1 plus E2 over E1. We have one on each side. We can cancel those. So now we have a relationship here. We want to know. Um, so we'll simplify this. This is E1 R2 is greater than E2 R1 plus R. And this is answer B. given in the uh, problem statement. So the conditions in which that the current in the external resistor R is increased when we short out the battery, uh, battery number two is this condition that E1 R2 has got to be greater than E2 R1 plus R. Okay, problem number three is we have N identical batteries connected in series and we want to find the short circuit current as a function of the number of batteries connected in series. Okay, we'll represent the batteries as their Thevenin equivalents and this is the first battery, this is the second battery. K is my battery uh, number counter. This is my third battery and then we have uh, more batteries connected in here and we come to the nth battery. The internal resistance of the corresponding batteries are E1, E2, E3 all up to EN and correspondingly with their internal resistances R1, R2, R3, R. I'm going to solve this in general. Uh, we will first solve in general and then put in that in the condition that our EKs are equal to E and our RKs are equal to R. They're all, they all have the same internal resistance and open circuit voltage. All right, we want to find the short circuit current. So the short circuit current is the sum of the voltages in the loop, which is the sum of all the open circuit battery voltages, so I will designate it as a sum as K goes from 1 to cap N of our EKs and we divide by the total resistance in the loop which is the sum of the internal resistances, so K goes from 1 to N of our RKs. Okay. Our each battery, each of our batteries are identical, so the EKs are equal to E, the RKs are equal to R for all K. So putting in here, we have I short circuit is equal then to the sum K equals 1 to N of EK, well the EKs are all E, and the sum from 1 to N of our RKs and our R RKs all have the same value R. So when we perform a sum, when we sum from 1 to N on the same constant E, we just get N times E. And when we sum again on the same constant R from 1 to N, we get N times R. The N's cancel. So the answer is the short circuit current is E over R. The short circuit current is independent of the number of batteries in the loop or connected in series. The current is constant no matter how many batteries you connect up. So the answer then as the, um, the short circuit current as a function of n would just be a constant at a value e over r and this is answer d. Now, we can look at this a little bit further. This makes sense because as you add a battery into the loop or into the series string, the net voltage increases by E and the net resistance increases by R. As the voltage increases by um, an integer number N, 
so does the internal resistance, the total resistance in the loop. So again, the ratio of the net voltage to the net resistance remains constant because they both increment and increase at the same rate. So we would expect that the short circuit current would indeed be a constant. Problem number four. We have N batteries connected in parallel and we want to find the short circuit current as a function of the number of batteries that are connected in parallel. Like before, we're representing the batteries by their 7N equivalents. So our first battery connected between A and A primed is battery E1 in series with an internal resistance of R1. So this is our first battery. K is our battery counter. This is K1. For our second battery, we have a voltage, open circuit voltage of E2 in series with R2. And our third battery, K equals 3, we have an open circuit battery voltage of E3 connected in series with its internal resistance R3 and so on up to the nth battery where the battery voltage is En in series with its internal resistance Rn. And then we're shorting across the parallel combination and looking to find this short circuit current. Well, to solve this network, the best thing to do is if we've represented our batteries by Thevenin equivalents is to convert them to the Norton equivalent. And the way we do that is we represent in the Norton equivalent a current source in parallel with the internal resistance of the battery. So the first battery which is has a Thevenin representation of E1 in series with R1 now becomes a current source. We the current source value is the short circuit current of the battery, which would be E1 over R1. That's the Norton current source value. And then it's in parallel with the same as the Thevenin resistance. The Norton resistances and the the Thevenin resistances are always the same. So we have a current source E1 over R1 in parallel with R1. Same with battery 2. Short circuit current is E2 over R2 in parallel with R2. Similarly, E3 over R3 is the Norton equivalent of battery 3 in parallel with R3. So on down the line to where we get to the nth battery where the Norton representation, the Norton current source value is En over Rn in parallel with Rn. Now the circuit becomes very easy to solve. We'll find the equivalent network well, when we have sources in parallel, we can add them. So our total net current is just, I will call this I equivalent. And it is the sum of all the current sources. So I equivalent then will be the sum of our EKs over RKs as k goes from 1 to n. We're just adding all the current sources up in the string. And then that is going to be in parallel with our equivalent. Well, our equivalent is the parallel combination of all n resistors. So we can write this as conductances conductances in parallel add. So 1 over R equivalent will then be the sum of 1 over RK as K goes from 1 to N. We add the reciprocal of the resistances which is the conductances to get us the conductance or 1 over uh, the conductance of the equivalent network which is 1 over the equivalent resistance. Now, the short circuit, this is our equivalent circuit of the original network. Now we want to find 
I short circuit. Well, I short circuit is just I equivalent. R equivalent does not enter in because the voltage across these two terminals when we put a short circuit across it the current going through R equivalent is zero because there's no voltage across it. So I short circuit then is just I equivalent. <clears throat> So we don't have to worry about the equivalent resistance. So this is our I short circuit. Well, the cells are all identical. The batteries are identical. So our EKs all have the same value for all K. And our RKs all have the same value for all K. So I short circuit then becomes a sum of E over R is K equals 1 to N. Well, E and R are constants with respect to our summation, so this just becomes N times E over R. So we see that our short circuit current increases linearly as the number of batteries that we add in parallel. And in the uh, problem set, this is answer A. That is, the graph of this as a function of N of I short circuit will, go, will be a linear relationship with slope E over R, or the slope is the short circuit current. Okay, problem number five. We have N batteries, which are identical, connected in series, with two of them connected of, in reverse polarity, and we want to find the voltage across one of the batteries that are connected in reverse polarity. Let's, it doesn't matter which battery of the two reverse ones that we choose. They'll both have the same voltage as a function of the number of cells that are connected. So ultimately what we want to do is find V cap A little a. The voltage between node cap A and little a. The voltage across this battery. Not just its feminine equivalent open circuit voltage but the voltage across the uh, total feminine equivalent model of the battery. Now I'm representing all the batteries by their Thevenin equivalents and two of the batteries are of reverse polarity that have cell voltage E and internal resistance R. There's a total of N batteries so N minus two of them are connected differently and in series with one another and they add. So N minus two of the batteries will have a Thevenin net equivalent voltage of N minus 2 times E and a Thevenin resistance of N minus 2 times R. Now our short circuit current, if we short all the batteries that are connected in series, our short circuit current will be flowing in this direction. So V cap A little a will be I short circuit times the voltage drop across R. So I short circuit R. And then to that we add E. So that's ultimately what we want to find. Is how does the short, or does the uh, voltage V cap A little a um, change as a function of the number of batteries that we add in the string. So we know R, we know E. We just need to find the short circuit current. So we'll write Kirchhoff's voltage law around the loop, going in a counterclockwise direction. So I short circuit goes through R and R, or 2R. So we have I short circuit times 2R. And then that current also goes through N minus 2R, 
resistance here. So this is plus I short circuit times N minus 2R. And then to that, we go through these um, battery cells. So we have 2E for these two batteries. We're going in a plus minus direction. And in this one, we go minus plus, so we subtract off N minus 2E, and this is equal to zero, our Kirchhoff's voltage law around the equation, around the loop. We can simplify that. This is 2E minus NE plus 2E. So this becomes 4E minus NE for that portion. So I'll rewrite the equation here and we can combine. We have 2R minus 2R plus R times N. So this is I short circuit times NR plus 4E minus NE equals zero. That's this equation rewritten as we've combined like terms. We move the 4E and NE to the right hand side. So we have I short circuit NR equals NE minus 4E or I will write this, I'll factor an E out so we have N minus 4. So, so our circuit current then, we divide through by NR, so we have E over N minus 4 over uh, NR. So I short cir circuit times R becomes E times N minus 4 over NR times R. Our R's go out. And I'll divide through by N. So we have E times 1 minus 4 over N. Just dividing N into the numerator here. Now to that we're going to add E. So V cap A little a is I short circuit times R which is E minus 4E over N and then we're going to add E. So this becomes now 2E minus 4E over N. Now we can simplify this by factoring out a 2E. So by factoring out 2E, I have 1 minus 2 over N for VAB. And that is answer D on the paper. So that's a voltage across the, one of the reverse polarity batteries in this string of N batteries as a function of N, the number of batteries in the string. This is problem number six. We have two batteries connected in parallel and we want to find the voltage across their terminals. This is our model. Battery one has open circuit voltage E1 with internal resistance R1. Battery two has open circuit voltage Thevenin equivalent voltage of E2 with Thevenin resistance and the internal resistance of R2. So we want to find ultimately what is VAB when the first battery has an open circuit voltage of 6 volts, internal resistance of 1 ohm. The second battery has open circuit voltage of 2 volts and an internal resistance of 3 ohms. So to solve this circuit, we first write Kirchhoff's voltage law to give us the current I. And then once we have I, VAB, if we sum our voltages from VA uh, node A to node V, VAB then becomes E1 minus R1I. 
So this is E1 minus R1i. We know E1, R1, we need to solve for I to put into this equation so we can get the terminal voltage. Remember the current, I've chosen to go counterclockwise, so it's flowing through the resistor in this direction. This is the more positive terminal, negative terminal, so when I sum the voltage from A to B, it's plus minus E1 minus I, R1. Okay, writing Kirchhoff's voltage law around the loop, starting at A, we have E2 plus I R2 plus I R1 minus E1 equals zero. Combining like terms, we have I R1 plus R2 um, plus E2 minus E1 is equal to zero, solving for I. I is E1 minus E2 over R1 plus R2. <clears throat> now, we form, we take R1 times I and subtract it from E1. So let's multiply I by R1, and we're going to subtract it from E1. So we have E1 minus R1 over R1 plus R2 times E1 minus E2. That is like that. Now we put everything over a common denominator. So this becomes E1 times R1 plus R2 minus E1 um, or R1 okay now let's form this subtraction so this becomes E1 minus R1i which is R1 over R1 plus R2 times E1 minus E2 Put everything over a common denominator of R1 plus R2. So we have E1 times R1 plus R2 minus, this becomes an R1 E1 plus R1 E2. Now we can see here that we have an E1 R1 and a minus E1, R1, so that and that will go out, and we're left with R2, E1, plus R1, E2, over R1, plus R2. So that's our, our voltage, VAB, in general terms. So we put in our values. R2 is 3. E1 is 6, plus R1, which is 1, and E2 is 2. And we divide by the sum of R1, R2, which is 1 plus 3, or 4. So this is 18 plus 2 over 4, or 20 over 4, or 5 volts. So VAB is 5 volts. This is answer. C. Question number seven is asking us if the terminal voltage across a battery can it ever be less than the cell voltage or the Thevenin and open circuit voltage in its model? Uh, can the terminal voltage be greater than VTH, less than VTH? Um, or equal to zero, or all of those choices. Now, I'm modeling the battery with its terminals A, B by its Thevenin equivalent circuit. Now, if it's connected to a passive network, then the passive network will have some sort of 
an equivalent resistance, R equivalent. So if we solve for the current in this network, then uh, writing Kirchhoff's voltage law around this loop, we have I times R equivalent plus R TH minus VTH is equal to zero. <clears throat> so solving for I, it's VTH over R equivalent plus RTH. Now the terminal voltage, VAB, will be VTH minus I times RTH. VTH minus I times RTH. So this becomes VTH minus our I, which is VTH over R equivalent plus R TH times RTH. I'll rewrite this as I'll pull out the VTH and write this as 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R equivalent over RTH. Now, for any finite or any value of R equivalent, we can see that this expression is going to be less than or equal to 1. So very obviously when you connect a passive network, the VAB can be will be less than VTH. This is always less than or equal to VTH. So definitely VAB will be less than or equal to VTH with a passive network connected to it. Now, if we have an active network where we can have either dependent or independent sources in here, then the current could be getting driven in the reverse direction because if the voltage source uh, equivalent in this active network is greater than VTH, it will drive current in this direction, which will cause a voltage drop across RTH to add to VTH, so the terminal voltage will be greater than VTH. So in this case, we could drive current rather in that direction where we had a passive network, we could drive our current I this way. So then VAB will be VTH plus I times RTH. And this definitely will be greater than VTH. So in this case, when you have an active network, VAB can be greater than the cell voltage of a battery. And if the current is just such, it could totally balance this out so it's also equal to zero. So the battery voltage terminals, the terminal voltage is zero. When the current driven in the reverse direction into the battery develops a voltage drop across its internal resistance equal to its open circuit voltage, then the VAB becomes zero. So the answer to the question then is, um, <clears throat> Uh, D that all of the above. Our VAB can be less than VTH, it can be greater than VTH, or it could be equal to zero. So that is answer D. I had a viewer ask me to solve uh, this problem. What the problem is, is that we have this network of three sources and three resistors and we're asked to find the currents in all of the wires using only Kirchhoff's voltage law. Well, that cries out to write, write loop equations. We have many different techniques at our disposal in which to solve networks. We have like Y delta, delta Y conversions, uh, we have uh, source reductions, Norton uh, to Thevenin equivalency, uh, Thevenin to Norton equivalents, uh, nodal equations, uh, loop analysis, or what some call mesh analysis, uh, and many other, type, uh, other, other techniques at our disposal. 
nodal analysis uses the fact that Kirchhoff's current law gives us that if we sum all the currents at a given node, the sum of the currents is zero. So we sum all the currents uh, at each of the nodes of a network when we designate arbitrary node voltages to each of the nodes. But that's using Kirchhoff's current law. In mesh or loop analysis, what we do is we sign a current to all the loops in the network and we use Kirchhoff's voltage law to sum all the voltages around their respective loops and solve for the currents, the loop currents. And that's what we'll do here because the question asked stated that we need to only use Kirchhoff's voltage law. So what we want to do is find all the currents in, find the currents in all of the wires like if I choose two loop currents, I'm going to go clockwise in loop 1, F, E, B, A, I have I1, and in loop E, O, C, B, I have current I2. So, the current in wire E, O will be the same as the current in O, C as in C, B, and this is equal to I2. The current in Fe will be the same as the current here in um, uh, Ba, you should call that Ba, or Ba, and in Af. And this will be equal to I1. So the current in this wire, this wire, and this wire will be I1, and the current in Eb will be I1 minus I2. So we only need now to find current I1 and I2. So if we choose the first loop and write Kirchhoff's voltage law, we sum all the voltages around the loop. So I'll start at node F, so I have minus 10 volts plus I1 minus I2, which is the current flowing in the 2 ohm resistor times the 2 ohms, plus 30 plus current I1 flowing in the 1 ohm resistor, and that's equal to zero. So combining like terms, we have 2I1 plus an I1, so that's 3I1, and then we have a minus 2I2, and then that will be equal to, we have minus 10 plus 30, which is plus 20, when we bring it over to the right hand side, we have minus 20. Now, there's a much easier way of writing uh, these loop equations, of which I'll use for the second loop. To write the equation for the second loop, we look at first all the resistances that touch I2, so that gives us the coefficient in front of I2. So we have 2 ohms plus 2 ohms, which is 4 ohms, so this will be plus 4 I2. And then we subtract off all the resistances that are common to loop 1 and 2, or the resistances that I1 flows through in loop I2, which is just a 2 ohm. So this is going to be a minus 2 ohms I1. And then we sub, uh, on the right hand side we put minus the voltages that we sum going around the loop. So we have minus 30, minus 50, which is minus 80, bring it to the right hand side, so that's plus 80. So that's our second equation. Now when you have a passive network, a good check on yourself when you write a system of equations like this is the matrix has to be symmetric. That is, the off major diagonal coefficients have to be the same. So if we have minus two here, we have to have a minus two there. We could write this in matrix form. We could write this as an impedance matrix like so, and the impedance matrix has to be symmetric. That is, the off-diagonal, major diagonal elements have to have the same value 
and sine. Okay, so we solve this simultaneous equation. The way you can do that is multiply this equation by 2 and add it to the second equation. I'll let you go ahead and do that. You'll end up that I1 is equal to 10 amps, I2 is equal to 25 amps. So then the currents in the wire, these three wires have current I2 which is 25 amps. These three wires have current I1 which is 10 amps and the current in this wire is I1 minus I2 or minus 15 amps which tells us that the current in this direction is minus 15 or it's actually a positive 15 amps going from B to E that the actual current is flowing upwards uh, from B to E. Hello, George Nachik here. Today is July 22nd, 2018. In this video, I'll be solving a number of very basic, simple electrical network problems. These problems were submitted to me by some students in India. Apparently, uh, they come off or are used to practice for a, what they call the JEE exam, apparently an important exam there for a college entrance. So I've taken my time and solve many of these problems in general terms so that you can apply it to other networks, other element values than just the ones that were specified. I will go through the exam questions. You can jump over uh, that portion of the video. If you look in the pinned comment, I have a time index into all the problem solutions so that you can pick and choose as you wish so you don't have to watch the whole video if you care not to. The only way to really gain proficiency in solving electrical network problems is you just have to practice a lot. You have to challenge yourself and solve as many network problems as possible. Goodness knows how many network problems I've solved over the years. Uh, thousands uh, ranging from the very simple to extremely complex active network problems um, dealing with um, operational amplifiers, LCs, dependent independent sources, yeah, transistor circuits. But to get to that point you really have to just practice and practice and practice. So we'll move on here. You just have to kind of excuse me. I look a little bit rough right now. I've been up for uh, let's see about 32 hours. I've have a very full plate and I just wanted to kind of get this video kicked out before I go and crash. So anyway, enjoy and comment and send, submit problems to me if uh, there's something that's stumping you. I'll be happy to uh, take a look at it for you. 